Okay, uh, good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank to, especially to the organizer and the team who made them a great effort to have me and all delegates to come to this conference today. Yes, as the time is not really allowed for me, so I will try to all my best to make it as short as possible. And uh, okay. oh, sorry. How to make? Okay, so uh, digitization project is like uh, uh, the f it is on and that the process is not yet finished, but. Uh, to to be here, I would like to give you an update and what we have done so far since the project is implemented until today. But before uh, coming to uh, the project, I would just like to uh, give you a little bit historical background about uh, the, the museum and how it was why we have the, the documents to be digitized. As many of you have learned about Cambodian genocide, it was happening from 75 to 79, and it was called as Khmer Rouge regime. As you can see the picture right here, it was the magazine of the Khmer Rouge. It's about the youth, um, youth magazine written by Khmer Rouge in 1976. But during the time, they have no, as you can see, they ruled for about four years, and they, they were like one, at least 1.7 million people died in their control, at least. And uh, under their control, Cambodia became a, a country with nothing because they closed everything, they shut down all educational system, and yes, money and properties and everything gone. And also, you can see at the bottom, I'm sorry, it's a little bit down. Uh, this was a former high school, but it was turned into a prison, which is called as Duas Line, uh, uh, it was Duas Line Prison, or S21 under the Khmer Rouge, and now it's become Duas Line Genocide Museum. So in this prison, there was at least uh, uh, 18, 1,063 people were in prison, and most of those people were, were executed. No one, almost no one survived, but only 12 people could survive on the last day from, from those amount of, of number of people. So it, 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 it said, we can say that no one survived from, from that, that place. And because of this place, there were lots of victims were uh, under the tortured process in order to give confession, to give biographies, to take photos. And from that point of view, we can have those documents up until today. It's like 400,000 pages of confession, biographies, photos, negatives, and so on. Sorry. So, I just like also to highlight how the situation of museum archive through these four years. As at the beginning of the 79, it was the year when the Khmer Rouge, let's say Khmer Rouge regime collapsed. So at the time, uh, this museum staff were collecting and compiling all the documents because doc those documents were also used for a trial which was not internationally uh, recognized, but it was happening in Cambodia on between 15 and 19 August 79. It was a trial against Khmer Rouge leaders Pol Pot and the Sari clique. And after the compilation, the staff were going on collecting all documents around the areas. And at the time, we also get a Vietnamese expert who have us to, to, who had a background as a museum arrangement, they have us to, to create, uh, to give advice to give in order to prepare for a an, an museum. And then later, uh, sorry, later on, in, so for those years, it seemed like nothing happened besides collecting and compiling. 
And in 1991 to 1993, we have uh, luckily uh, Dr. Uh, Judy uh, Ledgewood together with uh, Dr. John Batley from Cornell University. They were doing a digitization in 1980 at National Archive of Cambodia, and they saw the, the, the situation of Cam uh, Archive in, in my museum was in, a, in danger, so they did a, a digitize, but at the time it was putting into microfilm for, for a longer uh, cap. And then, I'm sorry, and then in 1993, we have two of uh, American photographers, they came to help us to restore the, the photos. It was like 5,000 of photos have been preserved by them. And uh, Mr. Uh, Douglas Neven and uh, John, John, uh, uh, yes, Douglas Neven. And they were famous with the photos, those photos exhibition, it was traveling around. It's called Facing the Dead. And then in 1994, they have another study by Yale University. So they, they are now you can find in the Yale uh, database. It was mostly photos and biography, not, a, uh, not everything, 5,000 of them. So it seemed from 1994 to, uh, to 2008, nothing happened with the archive. It just left, and then they have researchers, they have uh, uh, journalists, um, yes, mostly researcher or the student who, who did their PhD went to our museum archive and look all those original documents. Seeing so, uh, and uh, and then the document was sent. Uh, some of the documents were sent to the trial, which was uh, Khmer Rouge trial. It's trial on the chambers in the coast of Cambodia, which so starts in 2007. So most of many of document original document from from my museum was sent to this. So, so seeing that the use of the original document had been done uh, for, uh, continuously, and then the others, the storage of the museum was not in at, at the level of the standard, and about and and according to the season in Cambodia, it's, it may harmful to uh, to the doc to the condition of documents. So uh, that's why uh, we finally we we have uh, in 2009 we have our archive been registered. And then 2015, we got uh, generous support from Koika Korean, uh, uh, the government of Co Co Republic of Korea uh, gave us um, support with a huge amount of money to do digitization. But even though it was signed on 2015, but the project was postponed until uh, 13, 30 January 2008 to start the, its implementation. So it just uh, start for a reason. And it, the project lasts for, for two years. And here I just like to highlight who were the partnership with this project. So as you can see, our uh, main funding from Co uh, the uh, Republic of, the government of Republic of Korea with uh, the facilitation by UNESCO office in Phnom Penh and also uh, then the, the implementation is uh, we have these two company, uh, Digital Divide Data and uh, Bretchlin, who uh, gave uh, um, trainings uh, on, paper con uh, on paper preservation and uh, that was very technical. So they did they, 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 they responsible for doing digitized and under the supervision of Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts of Cambodia uh, with my museum, Tuslang Genocide Museum. And uh, in order to do that, we, we, we create a technical monitoring. They have advisory committee, uh, technical committee, which has uh, the meeting continuously over the year. So uh, just briefly about this, and we, we have four, we have designed the four of kind of this. First, we decide the, what are the activities of the projects. We would catalog, we do cataloging, we do preservation, pre preparation, scanning, capture, image, and finally indexing. So after indexing, we will make it accessible for the public. And the objectives, we want to preserve those uh, archives of which was list in the memory of the world. And uh, also to build up capacity of the staff, and the third one, 
to create a crowdsourcing website for, for the public and also to create a multimedia room at the museum ground for, for public or uh, for uh, registered res researcher to go and do their own research. So they would no longer touch the original document. And yes, I already mentioned about the partners and about the teams who were uh, working with this project. So what are the, uh, the her documents listed in Heritage? As I mentioned, the 400,000 pages listed, and those 400,000 divided into this. So we have 6,000 negatives, we have uh, 56 magazine, or Meru's magazine, we have the handbooks, we have biographies, we have confession, like 4,000 plus photos, and this is very, uh, I would say, iconic photos, uh, because you can see with the baby. So no one survived even the baby from that prison. And yes, so these were uh, the objectives to be done in two years project time from 30 January 2008 to December uh, 2019. So in order to do this, and we want the project to be done in the museum ground, so that's why we need to provide uh, a space. So this is a room uh, used to be a detention, detention cell for the Khmer Rouge, but it was later on by them they broke down. So we designed this room into a uh, digitization room. They were uh, four or five station where they capture, where they photograph, where they were scanning for those who, those uh, documents who were oversight. And some of the process uh, during the, 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 the implementation, we focus four steps, main four steps. First, prepare, prepare and preserve. It means before taking those documents to, to be digitized or to be scanned, they need to, to do uh, preservation first, like just to clear out some of, as you can see, they were clearing some of the, uh, I don't know, sorry, I don't know how to call it, something which is appear on the paper that it clears, that, like let's say dust, and then uh, they were like trying to make it uh, sewing some part of it, but before doing this, they got per, uh, the training from uh, Jacqueline Vincent. She's Canadian, she gave uh, us uh, the staff uh, for, for training. And then you can see they were scanning and capturing. So this were, they were scanning photograph or, or negative. For those uh, document which was A45, they were captured. So they don't want to, uh, to, to really scan. And, and here this was image editing. And finally, they did a check uh, quality control check for photograph and for documents. So, and um, uh, during the process of this digitization, they have a series of uh, training. As you can see, they have six training on preservation uh, and preparation, take off the clips, and, and then they have three time of di uh, on digitization. So it means the staff of the museum involved with the staff or the company which was uh, responsible for implementation to be sure that after the, the project's finished, the staff will be able to go on their work and to, to be able to train others. So that's why the, 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 the one of the goal of the project. And beside those training, we have a very special training on paper uh, conservation. So here are 11 staff from the museum, two staff from the, uh, the, the uh, Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts, and with, with the experts. So they were tr tr uh, trained on how to preserve the documents, how to make it uh, in a better, co a better condition, but not, they were not using a, a real document list in the memory, just in the another documents in 80s. And yes. So one of the, uh, as I already mentioned in, in my, my first sp uh, talk, that uh, the, condi the condition of the storage was not uh, was not in the condi uh, the standard dice, so that's why they are also uh, after that finished, they will have a new cabinet fire resistance uh, fire system uh, 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 resistant and the uh, cab cabinet with 
uh, iron and they have they would have these are the documents uh, after 79 mostly the administrative documents which is not really be preserved and a lot most of them stick together so they need to do all of these things to to make sure that uh, the the documents or list in mem memory order will be secure yeah and so this is the the latest uh, the the latest update of the project as i said the uh, document which is listed in a world heritage, there would be like 400,000, but the project staff, they make it m over plan. Like uh, preservation, they came up to 704,000 and seven, 745,000. Why it make more, more than that uh, 400,000? Because as you see the, the document after 79, so they not even preserve the document list by unit uh, by memory of the world but they did further to the documents after 79 so that's why preservation and preparation was higher number and page have been captured is also the same like uh, uh, for 495,000 and now the last stage that they had been indexing is already done so uh, this the next step is just about to to put it online, yeah. So you can see preservation, indexing, and the, the activities. So overall, to, uh, to conclude my presentation, uh, the, the goal, uh, again, just uh, first, they want to create, ac uh, and that digital and create access over those 400,000 pages of the documents. They want to preserve the original documents of TSGM. As I said, that many researchers go and see for the t they look for the original and they touch it, and then it make a dangerous condition. And uh, also build a consultation and multimedia center at TSGM at my museum because after the project's finished, we want we will create a room where researchers, students, they can go and de do their own research in the museum ground. But, and it is really close to the room of uh, the, the, the archive where we store the original documents. So it's kind of giving, besides uh, giving, putting online, we also give access for those who visit the museum itself to do a, a, a further research uh, on site in the museum ground. And yes, to build up uh, staff capa capa capability, uh, capacity is because we don't want when the we don't want to see that after the project done and the, the staff of company gone and the staff could not do anymore but to tell you that now our staff could be able to do uh, scanning the digitize on the documents after 79 they can do it they can um, uh, would, would be able to do so and the last the fifth one promote about this uh, promote peace and inter intercultural dialogue, and exist uh, the TGM to do network with similar situation. So this is overall uh, uh, overall aim of the project. But I also like to raise to you that uh, we are now challenged with uh, the selection, because since the start of the project, we had never thought of uh, confidential documents or uh, the document which is not really uh, shown to public, especially to, to the p uh, person or people. So that's why we now doing an, another step of selection. It's, it's really hard, it means we go back to, to go through all those 400,000 page, 400, pages and select one by one. But anyhow, when we finish the project by December, there would be many of these documents are online. And uh, the uh, public can access to the website of the museum. Yeah, and okay, uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you.